Hi there, everyone. My name is Christian Eschbach, and welcome to the last of a Rob Zombie triple shot. Now, if you are one of my regular viewers, you know that I started off with Hellbilly Deluxe, then I covered Sinister Urge, and now I am on to the third album that was released in Rob Zombie's solo career that is not directly related to the movies. Because yes, I could cover the House of a Thousand Corpses soundtrack, but no, I will not be covering it at this time. I may cover it as a soundtrack later on down the line. Because it was a soundtrack, it wasn't a Rob Zombie release. This one, on the other hand, is... Now, I normally don't do Greatest Hits. This is Rob Zombie, Past, Present, and Future. I normally don't do Greatest Hits. The reason I am making an exception for this one is... You probably will not catch me doing White Zombie on here for a very, very long time. Because I was never much of a White Zombie fan. I don't personally own any White Zombie... The only white zombie I own is on here. The other reason I'm covering this, not only because of the few white zombie songs that are on here, there is also a couple previously unreleased songs on here. There are some songs on here that are only available on soundtracks, that are only available in various different ways. So this is, this is more than just a greatest hits collection, even though it is. It's basically radio singles for the most part. But there's also other stuff on here as well, which is worth having. Especially if you don't want to go out and find or hunt down all the other little individual stuff like some fans do. There's also a second disc on here, a DVD of music videos. Now in the age of YouTube, not such a big deal. But this was really cool to have when this came out. And yes, I used to watch the DVD videos all the time. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain why. I'll, let me cover that first, okay? So for the videos, you had Thunderkiss 65... More Human Than Human, Dragula, Living Dead Girl, Super Beast, Never Gonna Stop, Feel So Numb, Demonoid Phenomenon, Return of the Phantom Stranger, and Spooky Baby. Now, Demonoid Phenomenon, Return of the Phantom Stranger, and Spooky Baby were all previously released, unreleased, and they were put on this just for this. I've already talked about those songs uh, with the exception of Thunder Kiss 65 and More Human Than Human, I have discussed all of those songs in my two previous reviews, so I'm not going to get back into them again. I will say having the videos for them is fun, though, and cool. It makes it a lot better. So let's get into the actual music itself. And I like that this album does it based on when the songs were actually released including putting the two previously unreleased tracks at the very end. So we got Thunder Kiss 65, the song that made White Zombie famous and therefore making Rob Zombie famous. I personally didn't mind Thunder Kiss 65. It is a fun song live. I like watching Rob Zombie do it live, but... When they do it live, they do it in a way that's really cool, and it works in with uh, John Fye's solo and some other stuff, so it's really cool for me that way. I'm not a huge fan of the song the whole way around, but it's not bad. Uh, but the next song after that I, is the White Zombie song out of those two I actually prefer a little bit more, and that is Black Sunshine featuring Iggy Pop. I really, even if it is, I, you know, you don't even have to know that it's Iggy Pop on there because the part that Iggy Pop does, it's really cool, but it, it's not, I don't want to say anybody could do it, but you don't have to know it's Iggy Pop for it to still be cool sounding. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's where I'm going at with that. And I really enjoy Black Sunshine. I think it's really a fun song and it's, there's just something about this guy, a cool groove. That goes in to Feed the Gods, one of the reasons I'm not a white zombie fan. Uh, then we go to More Human Than Human. Uh, yet again, kind of a reason why I'm not a big white zombie fan. And More Human Than Human was one of those kind of vibes that kind of carried over a little bit to Rob's solo stuff in the beginning. I don't mind it. But it's not it's not as good as it's gonna get. 
Uh, then we get to Supercharger Heaven, which I'm um, so so about. Now, the first five songs on this album, they get the album going for me. I don't skip any of them when I put the CD in. And this CD sat in my CD player for a long time. Now, granted, when I say it sat in my CD player for a long time, I had a 20, I used to have a 25 disc CD player. So when it sat in there for a while, it was okay for it to sit in there for a while. <laughs> Now I'm down to five discs, so most things don't sit in there for too, too long. Or they cycle through a lot quicker. Um, but those first five songs, they're very much White Zombie songs. If you were into White Zombie, they're nice to have on here. It's nice to have that representation. I personally, myself, I don't care about it one way or the other. It's, it's cool, but no, I can live without it. Then we get into, and we're still technically doing White Zombie, but this is where things start to change a little bit. We get into one of the first covers on here with I'm Your Boogeyman. I like this. Rob Zombie doing stuff from these 70 funk bands and stuff like that. I'm your boogeyman, I'm your boogeyman. Ow. Rob does it right. Rob knows how to do it, and it's great. It sounds fantastic. I love I'm Your Boogeyman, and... It's a really fun song, and I, I like that it was a change into the right direction. That then takes us into Hands of Death, Burn Baby Burn, featuring Alice Cooper. This was from an X-Files soundtrack CD. And I never picked it up because I... It, it eventually came out on the Alice Cooper box set, so that was one reason I didn't have to pick it up. And I had it on the Alice Cooper box set before I had it on here, so I didn't ever really need it on here either. Because I don't really need to hear the song. It's not a bad song, but it's not... It's not anything I was... Especially considering it's an Alice Cooper song, it's not anything I was really hoping I've mentioned for. this before, I'm not usually a big fan when Alice Cooper guests on other people's albums. It, they use too much of the cliche Alice. Not enough of the actual Alice on an album Alice, you know. it's They want the Alice character, not the Alice creator, we'll say. Then we get The Great American Nightmare featuring Howard Stern. This was from the Howard Stern Private Parts soundtrack. I do have that soundtrack, and I might actually... Wait, did I do that soundtrack yet? Ooh, that's a good question. I think I might have. I'll have to check on that one. Ooh, if I haven't, I'll have to do it. Um, The Great American Nightmare. Not bad. It's enjoyable. It's kind of fun. Dragula is up next. Okay, so I've already reviewed Dragula. Go watch my review for that album, which would be Hellbilly Deluxe. Same with Living Dead Girl and Super Beast. Those three all came off of Hellbilly Deluxe, which there was only one other song on that album I would have suggested putting on here as well, or instead... But that is all good. We don't need to worry about it. That that tells you, you know, kind of even how Rob felt about the album. And then we get to the Sinister Urge part of the album with Feel So Numb, Never Gonna Stop, Demon Speeding. And those are absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. Love them. My only complaint is that House of a Thousand Corpses was left out to put on, like, Demon Speeding. <laughs> that, would, that would be my big complaint, okay? From there, we go into Brick House 2003 featuring Lionel Richie and Trina. I love Brickhouse. Brickhouse is one hell of a great tune. Absolute must in a Rob Zombie repertoire as far as I'm concerned, if you're going to listen to it. Um, one of the songs I would have loved to have seen 
Rob do live, but I can understand why it wasn't done live. Too hard to recreate live because, you know, first off, you have to have someone that can do the rap section. Or you can leave the rap section out. The song would be fine without it. But you still kind of want that Lionel Richie part there because he does add to it a little bit. <laughs> ah, then we get to one of my all-time favorite Rob Zombie songs. I absolutely love this song. I know it is horrible. It is in bad taste. It is everything you could complain about about being wrong with Rob Zombie. And that is one of the reasons I love it so much. And that is... Buzilika! Yeah! <laughs> Sorry, folks. Couldn't help myself, and I might even censor that. I'm not sure. Oh, man. So, if you haven't been able to tell yet by some of my song choices, I usually prefer the slower, more haunting kind of style songs that Rob Zombie does, which is one of the reasons why I love, you know, um, House of a Th the actual song House of a Thousand Corpses so much. Pussy Liquor is another song, and it's got this great vibe to it, and this great feel and everything else to it. And I'll be honest, when that song came on live, not only was I amazed that he performed it live, but man, was I screaming that baby at the top of my lungs. Oh, just so much fun on that song. From there, we go into another song that I've actually covered already in another review. Uh, Rob Zombie's version of the Ramones classic Blitzkrieg Bop, which you can find my views on in the We're a Happy Family tribute album. Um, I don't remember how long ago I did that. It's been a little bit. You have to check back a few. Uh, and then the album finishes off with the last two previously, as I mentioned before, the previously unreleased tracks, which is Two Lane Blacktop and Girl on Fire. Two Lane Blacktop is, if you like Black Sunshine, which I do, if you like Dragula, like if you like the songs that were Rob's got that driving kind of groove to it, it's got that great driving kind of groove to it. So I really dig Two Lane Blacktop for that reason. Uh, Girl on Fire is a great song when I'm listening to the album. Not necessarily a song that I I would write home about. It's also not necessarily a song I'd use to close out an album, but it's different in this case because this is a retrospective of everything Rob had done up until this point. Now, one could argue that there are white zombie songs before Thunder Kiss 65 that Rob could have put on here, but I'm sure he left those songs out for a reason. I know that there was at least two albums before, um, what was it, El Sexer Sisto or whatever the name of the album that Thunder Kiss came off of. Um, there was at least two albums before that. I had a buddy that had him who was that hardcore of a fan. He went out of his way to find them. So there are albums out there before that. Even my buddy wasn't in it. On the, he's like, no, no. <laughs> I personally, this was the first, uh, this is the album prior to John five joining the band that I listen to the most out most often because it is the greatest hits and I do enjoy them and whatnot. And this is the greatest hits album, especially if you can find with the one with the DVD. I know once again, in day with YouTube where all the videos are available anyways, is not so much of a thing, but I really like having it. I think it's really cool. I, you know, and if the internet goes down, I still can watch those videos. <laughs> But, anyways, folks, those are my thoughts, those are my views. Uh, that is why I have covered this album, because at this point, anything going forward is the Rob Zombie stuff I truly, truly like. After Rob got out, because this, this was basically, Rob was honestly, other than doing the odd song here and there, possibly for soundtracks and that, basically, Rob Zombie was done with music after this album got released. He he was really burnt out. He didn't think he could come up with anything new, original. He, he honestly thought his days of being a real, true, original musician were over. And he was ready to give it up and go 100% balls deep into Hollywood, from what I understand. And John 5 is what saved him from doing that. And really, John 5 joining with Rob Zombie is where I truly 
become a real hardcore, you know, you have to love this album fan. <laughs> um, and not every album is a winner. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I've covered already, so you can go back and check, you know, what I've covered. But this collection is a great collection to have. I don't, if it wasn't for the fact that House of a Thousand Corpses is left off of this collection, this is like the perfect collection to have. If it would have had House of a Thousand Corpses on it, if that would have been on here, you would never need to own one of the two prior albums or any of the White Zombie albums, as far as I'm concerned, before this. You'd have everything you need to go from here moving forward. But because House of a Thousand Corpses isn't on here, you have to own Sinister Urge. That's just the way it works. Sorry, folks. Anyways, those are my views. Those are my opinions. The comment section. Let me know what your views and opinions are. I am interested. Also, I'd like to know what Rob Zombie album you want me to do next. I've got it all. So, let me know what you want to do next. Uh, other than that, uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. That subscribe button it is really important to me right now. Uh, I'm trying to get up to the point where I can start doing some live streaming. So, if you could hit that, that would really help. So, I can start doing some live streaming. Other than that, folks, peace, love, take care. Also, check out the Patreon link below because I forgot that.